Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa is moving to reinvigorate its public procurement of new electricity capacity after recent disappointments and amid ongoing load shedding. Jan Screamer joins me to discuss the key messages that emerged from bidders' conferences on the country's new renewables, battery and gas bid windows. Hi Terence. Hi Shemal. This effort to pick up the procurement pace comes after a difficult period for public procurement. Yes, you know, public procurement got massively disrupted around 2015. There was a bid window in place uh, at that stage, bid window four, for renewables. And the Eskimo leadership at the time said they were no longer going to sign power purchase agreements and that there was sufficient capacity from a recovering coal fleet, which we know turned out to be incorrect assessment. And be that as may, we had this long period of, uh, of disruption resumed with the risk mitigation round, which we all know about because of the, the car power ships were so dominant within that round, um, and then also a bid window five. So we, we know that very few of the projects out of risk mitigation actually got to financial close, including the, the power ships, which the, the grid connection budget quotes or the allocation expired uh, in December last year. So a few hybrid projects did get get through and one is already in operation. Um, uh, but other than that, it re really can be seen as a bit of a failure of public procurement. In bid window five, there were really good prices, good projects bid for both wind and solar. And then we had the COVID lockdowns um, out of China in particular was very disruptive because a lot of these the equipment comes in from, from China, as well as the, the Russia invasion of Ukraine, which changed energy prices generally including the components for renewable energy. And th that, so these, these were bid prior to the, the full extent of the COVID uh, lockdown disruptions and obviously the Russian invasion being factored in. So also not many of those projects uh, got to financial close. Some did and uh, they are in construction. And uh, then we had bid window six and there the grid constraints came to the fore and only the solar component was supposed to be a massively scaled up round, the biggest ever, and only 1,000 megawatts of solar PV were signed. And, and even there, some of those projects are, are struggling to reach financial close. None of the wind projects even got to preferred bidder status because Eskom said there's no grid in those areas where you bid. So we can see we're coming out of a massively disruptive period after actually having a fairly steady state tempo from about 2011 to 2014, where most of our uh, renewables got procured during that, that, that period. We've just had a really stop start um, post that period. Um, and it's, it's been amplified by things like COVID lockdown. So now the issue is to try to get this public procurement into a, a sort of a more a steady uh, procurement tempo and that's very necessary given, you know, that we can see the continual failing of the coal fleet, this massive gap of, of at least 6,000 megawatts in the system that makes us vulnerable to load shedding all the time. And really very little new capacity has been added because of public procurement. Thankfully, it's not the only game in town. And thankfully, uh, because of the liberalization of uh, the Electricity Regulation Act and the ability of the private contracted power to come in, we have seen a number of those projects get to financial close, but they're only in construction. We aren't seeing much uh, delivery, except for what the smaller scale stuff that has also been very impressive. Over 4,000 megawatts of smaller scale was added last year. Uh, 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 yeah, so it's a, it's a, it was an amazing um, uplift there, but we need to see a lot more, more happening, and we need the public procurement uh, programs to be working alongside what's happening on the private sector side. What is currently in the market? So currently in the market from the 14th of December are three bid windows, a large renewables procurement round for 3,200 megawatts of wind and 1,600 1, um, megawatts of, well, 800 megawatts of solar PV. Uh, that's an, uh, impressively sized, um, but again, grid constraints are going to be a, a factor here. Uh, we've got the battery, second battery storage round. Uh, that the first one did uh, come to a conclusion with preferred bidders announced in November last year. So this is the second one, similar size, 615 megawatts, about 2,400 megawatt hours. 
uh, from that program and the, the sites have been identified in the northwest province, eight sites, substation sites for those battery programs. And then we've got the inaugural gas to power round. Now we know that the, R, uh, the RP, the current one, the 2019 RP, not the one that's under discussion, has 3,000 megawatts of RPP gas procurement. This is only for 2,000 megawatts because 1,000 has been reserved for a process that's going to get underway at uh, the Kucha Special Economic Zone in the Eastern Cape. So this first 2,000 megawatts is a site agnostic bidding process, but they have limited Richards Bay, which is emerging as the preferred location for gas to power, as well as South Africa's e evolving gas strategy. They've li limited it there initially to 1,000 megawatts, unless they can't get the, the other 1,000 megawatts from the rest of the country. Um, because I think in the back, in the wings, is the th potential 3,000 megawatt gas to power project from Eskom, which got a ministerial determination. So that's really what's in the market. So it's a big amount of procurement. It's an impressive, <laughs> you know, set of documents that are out. I mean, it's always frustrating for people that want to know what's in the document that you have to pay so much money for them. But uh, to their credit, the RPP office has run a series of bidders conferences, as you mentioned, to give uh, potential bidders, even those that don't have the procurement documentation or RFP documentation, insight into what is in, the, in these three tenders. What sorts of issues have been highlighted for these bid windows? Again, for the renewables, very much the grid issues are the number one constraint. Now, there's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that's navigated this time. Obviously, there's been an expiry of budget quotes, car power ship and a few other projects, likely from bid window five, going to lose their, their budget quotes or their cost estimate letters from Eskom. Um, so those projects, those, that capacity could become available in where Eskom has identified that there being no capacity, so that's the eastern, northern and western Cape provinces, as having really no capacity in the current uh, the sort of grid framework that is being used, where there's sort of 19 gigawatts of connection capacity in the rest of the country. But in those three provinces, which is where everyone has developed a lot of project pipeline um, and would like to connect, you know, because these are very good wind and solar locations, there could be some availability there but limited and then we also have to see we were there was a expectation that curtailment might immediately unlock but that that process as well as Eskom's process for selecting and reserving almost um, grid connection capacity for public procurement and power procurement cycles which is what they want to get to they aren't that that process those two aren't fully approved by the regulator yet so I don't think we're going to see a major tra change to, to curtailment, but with the, cur the curtailment regime that, that has been prevailing up until now has been liberalised for this, uh, this round so that you get immediate compensation for curtailment. You don't have to reach, reach a 5% threshold where, it's, where the grid can't take you and then you only start getting compensated. So that might, might also help, but it will be interesting to see where these projects are bid um, especially the wooden, wooden projects, because that was a, a real problem with Bidwindow 6. So that, that's, I think, a big issue for the, for the, um, the renewables program. For the battery program, you know, uh, the sites for the battery, the eight northwest province sites, are only known since December now. You have to get your environmental authorizations and all those in place. Well, you see if they've made some serious progress on that, so there's going to have to be a scramble around those subsidised station sites and getting land, acquiring land or getting lease agreements. So there's a lot there that has to take place before the uh, bid submission date, which is the end of April. That's soon. Um, and then for the gas programme, this is new. So it's going to be... They've given a much longer gestation period for the tender at, uh, until the August. And uh, there's a lot that has to uh, be understood there. Uh, where can you set up these things? Where are the gas molecules going to come from? How are you going to firm that up in the time frame before bidding? Is it realistic that, for instance, it, uh, there's a private terminal that's going up in Richards Bay? Is that gas going to be uh, available? Um, or are you going to have to make other contingencies in time? 
So there's a lot of, uh, I think, unknowns around that program. But there's, a, there's also it's a very detailed um, uh, RFP that's put out. And, you know, and I think that they, they, they've, they've tried to accommodate. So if you can't link your project to the, the Riches Bay Terminal, bringing in your own gas, but you need you know, some sort of port access for that because we don't really have domestic gas. Uh, the whole rand dollar exchange rate, uh, the, the, the vagaries of the, the gas market, those all have to be worked out um, in the tariff. So there's a lot that's unknown there. I think the unknown, I think the difficulties are, are known for the other two programs, you know, getting your environmental authorization, getting your grid access. In all cases, this grid issue is going to be a, a, a problem. And Eskim has set a fairly early deadline for submissions for cost estimate letters for the renewables and the battery program, uh, I think the end of February. And um, then the gas program, I think, has got a bit more time to get that grid connection, but that's going to be an overlay for everything. But you can see there's a lot of, there's a lot of issues that these, these potential bidders uh, need to get through. And it's against the background of serious disruption and failure so will there be the appetite? I must say, at least being part of those bidders' conferences, virtual conferences, there was always a, over 400, between 400 and 550 people that, have re that were online right throughout those very long conferences. So that does show there is still interest, but we'll have to see that, will that con interest be converted uh, into actual bids? Because we need as many as possible to really make sure that we get the best price as consumers. That's, a, that's the aim of competitive bidding. But uh, that's still unknown. But we'll start getting visibility, I think, towards the end of April and then the evaluation phase and hopefully start seeing preferred bidders because we really do need this public procurement um, uh, in, engine also to be firing, not just what, what's happening in the private sector. There is also more to come and quite soon. Yes, amazingly, we're going to be getting bid window eight or so 5,000 megawatts being launched probably before the end of March. So that's more wind and solar, also in terms of the current integrated resource plan of 2019. We're going to have the third battery storage round for a similar size, about 616 megawatts, again 2,400 plus megawatt hours, also possibly before the end of March. And then they're talking about this two-phased cooker uh, gas to power tender which will be start with a request for qualifications, and that could also come out you know, before the end of the fi government's financial year, which is the end of March, and that will be for 1,000 megawatts. So besides a very, you know, besides also mopping up the loose ends around bid window six, bid window five, the risk mitigation, the getting those battery storage, those, uh, those first round battery storage projects actually into construction because they haven't reached financial close, and then all this evaluation that has to take place around the three bid windows that were announced in December is going to be a whole other round of bid windows coming through. So we need, but we need this tempo because of the crisis that we're in, but we also need not just tempo, we need to have conversion, which is what we really haven't had since the resumption of these public procurements uh, in 2019-2020. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.